Hi, I'm Tony Poulos and I'm at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. And today I have with me Harpinder Mathuru, who is the Senior Director, Product Marketing of the Wired and Wireless Group at AMD. Harpinder, it's great to catch up. I'm really interested to hear about what you're doing here, particularly around AI, because everyone's talking about AI. And how does AI fit into the RAN and the open RAN market? Yeah, so AI, you should look at it as a, as a tool in a toolbox. And uh, there are three aspects. First of all, within the base station, you want to find avenues to improve the capacity of the base station. So AI comes very handy there. Wherever we have uh, estimation, say channel estimation is one, one aspect of it. Wherever you have heuristic algorithms like scheduler, AI can do marvelous. And uh, when, it, when, when you look at uh, cluster of base stations, how you manage them, AI is a great tool for that. And then if you go to edge or where you host your services, that is another area where AI turns to be a very good tool. So from that perspective, RAN and Open RAN is trying to define some use cases in context of RIC, and I think they'll, they're going to expand it to other areas of RAN as well. So we are looking forward to its use cases, and 3GPP is now defining it as part of uh, their uh, release 17. So it's, it's getting covered at all aspects of uh, standardization and industry lines, as well as we are seeing that uh, these tools can be leveraged today in context of 5G and then leading into 6G. So would I be right in presuming that uh, the AI can help produce a more efficient uh, RAN system and also, but is there any power or performance degradation? Uh, you know, we keep hearing about these GPUs being really power hungry. Right, right. So, so I think a lot of things need to be clarified here. First of all, um, in a base station instance, you don't need a GPU. And it's basically, you can instantiate AI as an inference engine as part of, say, for example, and AMD is doing adaptive SOC products and we have a demo going on here where we use a portion of our device to do uh, AI inference. And just to give an example, um, one of the key requirements that we see today is how do we really improve the spectral efficiency, for example, right? So, so in order to do that, we are using portion of our device which sits in existing today's base station as a companion device to sometimes ASICs. So the same device can be leveraged to boost the spectral efficiency. And how you do that? You do a better channel estimation. You're, everything is having some pattern to it. We, as a user, have a pattern to using the network. So you leverage those patterns and improve the channel estimation in that process, and thereby you, you can enable the scheduler to schedule users more efficiently, right? So, so if you are able to boost the spectral utilization by, say, 20 or 30%, Operators can save the number of base station instances they, they need to have, or, or they can scale the capacity, right? Now, the, now, when it comes to the question of power, right? So these devices have are designed for tops per dollar per watt efficiency. So they are extremely efficient from that perspective. Now, having said that, certainly you need GPUs for training, and that training you have to do uh, as, as part of your model development. But once you train your models, you instantiate these models in these devices and you go through a lot of optimization uh, uh, techniques like you do quantization, you do pruning so that these models are efficiently implemented and don't, don't cause penalty. In fact, the ROI will be much better. So, so we are working on these te exciting technologies and they'll mature as the time progresses. I dread to ask this question, but can you elaborate more on AI and 6G? And uh, how do those two correlate? Wow, so it's, it's a very good question. In fact, uh, uh, as you know, 6G requirements are being gathered in 3GPP, standardization will happen. But you know that 3GPP is already putting AI as a very important element in the, in the specifications. So I, we, we believe that uh, just like 5G introduced the cloud native concept, we, we believe that 6G, uh, the 3GPP and uh, the, the proposal that we'll, we'll see in 3GPP will move it towards being AI native. So leveraging AI as a, as a tool in all, all aspects of RAN deployment and in, in, the, in the signal chain within the base station to how you optimize it, to how you instantiate services. We do believe that that'll be a core part of uh, 60. And another important thing to highlight here is like for 5G, for example, release 15 started with enhanced mobile broadband as a, as a main use case, targeting consumers, right? And then Subsequently, we have, we have other use cases coming into picture like 
ultra reliable low latency and massive machine uh, type communication. We believe that 6G needs to look at enterprise and other services first uh, so that you know we, we can scale and we can enable help operators to monetize their networks so, so that they can pass on that uh, uh, that that uh, benefits to the supply chain, right? Uh, so, so the supply chain could be a little bit more uh, uh, being productive, uh, beaming it with a lot, lot more innovations coming in. So we believe that uh, 6G will be more enterprise centric to, and will open up more use cases uh, for, for the RAN deployments. Yeah. What are the challenges that AMD is seeing on the RAN and AI? Right, so if you look at, uh, so AI concept is, uh, first of all, some of the AI elements have already been introduced, uh, have, have been implemented in existing base station implementation, right? So they, they are not uh, something completely new, right? But if you have to incorporate some of the uh, new developments that we have seen in AI, obviously we have to find a way to introduce them in the existing infrastructure. So I would say that um, a lot of radios are already existing there installed, the first place where we can introduce them is the DU or the base station, right? And as we are seeing, uh, VRAN instances are getting introduced. So it's much easier for us to uh, introduce AI as a, in, in a VRAN instance in DU. And obviously, as uh, newer uh, base stations uh, evolve, there'll be much more planned. Uh, if it is a proprietary box, they'll have some functionality already incorporated. Uh, so, so we do see that uh, beginning will be DU and gradually as new radios are deployed, then you in introduce in those radios and likewise you provision those in the edge uh, sites as well. In closing, 6G is stated to be deployed in 2030. So why are we talking about it now? Yeah, first, first I would like to correct uh, that uh, we look forward to seeing uh, some early deployments in 2028 as part of, uh, it has been the case, you know, Olympics will kind of trigger that. Uh, it will be early. Uh, deployments, but if they're early deployments, think 2028, you need to have systems ready by 26, 27, tested. Okay, there'll be standardization may not be quite there, but still you have to have some systems tried out. And if you have to do standardization, then you need to have some proof of concept, some test beds in 2026, 2025. So, so we as uh, adaptive SOC FPGA provider play a significant role right from the beginning when you have an idea you do a proof of concept to prove it out, and then that becomes one of the contributions to the standard, and then you do the, take the proof of concept for early commercialization, early introduction of the products, and then sub, sub, subsequently mainstream. So you have to basically look from 2028 backwards, and therefore I think uh, it's, it's about time, we are in 2024, so not much time remaining for us. And we've still got a lot of 5G catching up to do in the meantime. Uh, I agree, uh, I think 5G, uh, still more deployments need to come and we do see that many of the sites, uh, they are gonna hit uh, capacity given every every year we have a growth of 30% more traffic, right? So, so I think 60, just like 5G introduced these mid bands, we expect that 60 will open up seven gigahertz to 24 gigahertz, again, which specific band that has to be uh, decided um, as within the industry. But it, so for these bands, it, 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 it's uh, potentially possible that we'll look into new transmission schemes, new new frame uh, frame structure and new uh, coding, right? So from, from that perspective, uh, we do see that uh, uh, 60 uh, discussion will, will start in parallel with uh, replenishing the 5G infrastructure. We will never stop moving forward. Uh, Finder, thank you very yeah. much for being yeah. with me today. Yeah. And th thank you, Tony.